A very good morning to you. It's Dr. Ryan here once more. Thank you for joining me for yet another beautiful algorithm in internal medicine. What a glorious day it is, like the psalmist to pen the words. This is the day the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. So I hope that you're rejoicing wherever you are. Thank you once more for those who have viewed my videos and are liking and sharing them. What do you tell your neurologist when he upsets you? You tell him, you are like myelin. You get on my nerves. Okay, <laughs> just a little bit of humor on this uh, beautiful Saturday morning. We're going to be tackling the topic of seizures. Quite a hectic one. Uh, we're going to be discussing 40 etiologies behind seizures. Right? So let's just set a foundation first up. A seizure is defined as an abnormal, excessive, or synchronous neuronal activity resulting in transient symptoms and signs, including sensory, motor, and uh, autonomic manifestations. Status epilepticus is reached when the duration of a typical seizure is longer than expected, usually above five minutes, or when seizures recur in succession without interval return to baseline consciousness. A post-ictal state is a transient period after a seizure characterized by changes in behavior, motor function, and neuropsychological performance. Right? As seizures, as we know, can be focal or generalized, and focal seizures involve a portion of the brain at onset and are limited to one hemisphere. Generalized seizures involve both cerebral hemispheres simultaneously with loss of consciousness. And we said the focal seizures can be simple, that is, without um, impaired awareness, or complex with impaired awareness. All right? um, seizures can also be unprovoked or provoked. Um, and epilepsy is a disorder of the brain characterized by recurrent, unprovoked seizures. Long-term remission is achieved with anti-epileptic drugs in most patients with epilepsy, okay? All right, so let's talk to this now. Our algorithm, as always the case, we have the left side and the right side. So the left side, we're looking at unprovoked seizures. On the right side, provoked seizures. So after unprovoked, there's a, um, we diagnose epilepsy, which by definition is a tendency towards recurrent seizures without a known cause. Okay, so that's further partitioned into focal and generalized, like we said, originating in either one specific portion of the brain or coming from multiple portions of the brain. Focal will be further subcategorized as being simple or complex based on whether or not there is impairment of consciousness. Then, in terms of generalized epilepsy, here we talk about our different subsets of epilepsy. There's absence seizures, myoclonic, then there's tonic or clonic, or you can have the tonic-clonic variety, which is grand mal, and the Atonic variety as well. Usually, uh, EEG characteristics and clinical characteristics have to sub uh, classify these generalized uh, seizures. Okay, so within the armbit of epilepsy, there's eight possible etiologies. Then we move on to the uh, provoked causes of seizures. So we know that um, here we look at the different sections of infectious versus toxic versus vascular metabolic and structural and this encompasses probably about 32 varied etiologies behind seizures. Let's dig into this. We've got infectious causes as in meningitis or encephalitis. Sometimes these combine to give you a meningoencephalitis, right? Brain abscess is another one, toxoplasmosis, neurocystoscosis and uh, PML which is progressive multifocal leukencephalopathy. Important to look out for this especially in our subpopulation of patients who are immunocompromised um, uh, as notably associated with HIV. All right, then the toxic variety, we have uh, alcohol. Both alcohol intoxication and withdrawal can induce seizures. Medication as well, some of them lower the seizure threshold. I'm sure you can think of a couple of examples. Recreational drugs and poisons, right? So those fit into toxins. Vascular causes is quite varied, right? Stroke, as we know, both hemorrhagic and or ischemic stroke can cause it. Hypertension, especially when we look at hypertensive encephalopathy. Uh, sometimes presenting with posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome right, in patients in hypertensive emergency. That's a common cause. Intracranial hemorrhage, needless to say. Cerebral venous thrombosis, the one that comes to mind is superior sagittal sinus thrombosis. Uh, congenital vascular malformations, or AV malformations are in there. Aneurysms, uh, which can also lead to dissection as well. Vasculitis, right, which is an autoimmune phenomenology, can also be infectious. Uh, reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome and moya moya. All right. Metabolic etiology is quite common in the wards, right? Some of them, most of them, all of them reversible to a certain degree. Hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, hyponatremia, hypernatremia. You often see that these repair the hypos with the hypers, right? And that's a nice way to remember stuff, you know, when you consider antonyms or opposites, 
right? Then when you speak to hypomagnesemia and hypocalcemia can induce seizures as well. Remember, hypocalcemia is associated with neuromuscular tissue excitability, and that's why we have the trousseaux and the chvostics associated with it, and the tetany and the periodontal paresthesia. All right, cerebral hypoxia can also induce it. Uremia, so patients with CKD, uh, you know, often present with this, or even acute on chronic kidney disease. Liver failure, we know, can induce it on the basis of the hypogly hypoglycemia as well as on the, uh, uh, you know, hepatic encephalopathy that ensues. Eclampsia, we know, there's seizures there and porphyria. So there's 11 big causes which are metabolic in nature which can contribute to seizures. Then we have the structural variety as well associated with brain tumors. And whenever we speak to tumor, we say either it's primary or secondary. And most brain tumors, by and large, are secondary or malignant lesions. And then traumatic brain injury as well. So you can see it's quite a busy algorithm. I'm sorry that the font is a bit small, but I'm sure we can appreciate that the etiology behind seizures is quite vast and quite wide. And most acute seizures resolve spontaneously within a few minutes. If a seizure is prolonged or status epilepticus is reached, then first-line pharmacological therapy is an IV administered short-acting benzodiazepine unless it is uh, an immediately reversible working condition like hypoglycemia and so forth. All right. So I trust that you have been blessed by this algorithm and this gives you a good structured approach to a patient with seizures, which is a relatively common condition that we see in internal medicine in the wards. And I just want to encourage you, as always, with a little saying, uh, the capacity to learn is a gift. The ability to learn is a skill. But the willingness to learn is a choice. And I hope that all of us will make that choice to be consistent in our learning so that we can be better people and better physicians in days and years to come. This is Dr. Ryan. Thank you once more for joining me. This was our first um, algorithm in neurology. Next up, we'll be tackling the broad category of headaches. Hey, all this neurology is giving me a headache. Okay, looking forward to seeing you next time. Take care.